this video, I'm going to take you through the procedure to get connected between your TwinCat development environment and a TwinCat PLC runtime. For the PLC runtime, I will be using this um, CX1020 processor with a TwinCat PLC runtime installed. And for the development environment, I have TwinCat installed on my laptop, which I will be using. So let's get started. For communications between our development PC and the CX processor, we will be using Ethernet. So for the physical Ethernet connection, we simply need a straight through Ethernet cable. We will not be needing a crossover cable or a hub or a switch because the CX processors, with the exception of the CX1000, supports auto MDIX, which simply means you can use a straight cable and it auto detects whether it needs a crossover cable and automatically adjusts. So let's go ahead and plug this in. We're going to plug into either port um, and then take the other end of the cable and let me bring my laptop in here and plug into the Ethernet port in the laptop. Now the first thing you should notice is the corresponding LAN light to the port in which you plugged into should turn green. That's your verification that you have a good physical connection. If you do not have that physical connection um, light, then the first thing you may want to try is try a different Ethernet cable. If that does not solve the problem, then let's go onto our PC and I'm going to show you a few things you want to check um, for that. So go to the control panel and if your control panel does not look like mine, you over to the left you can look see if you have a switch to classic view and you click that and then you will get a control panel looking like mine. So you want to go into network connections. Now once you're in network connections look for the local area um, connection and see if that is grayed out <clears throat> which means it's disabled. If it is disabled just simply right click on it and go to enable. Now once you enable that you should then after a few seconds see the lights on the um, CX come on. If that still doesn't work, you may want to try to reboot because sometimes that will help the problem. But before we can proceed, you must get the physical connection and make sure you get a land light on the CX processor. So assuming you've made it that far, let's move on to the next step. Once we've established a physical connection, we can then configure the network settings. We're going to do this by going to control panel. And once we are in the control panel, we want to go to network connections. And once we're in network connections, we're going to look for our local area connection, which we are using to connect to the CX controller. And let's right click that and do a properties. And once the properties window opens, we want to scroll down through the list and find Internet Protocol TCP IP and then click our properties button. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure it says obtain an IP address automatically and obtain a DNS server address automatically. Now also let's check the other tab for alternate configuration and make sure that automatic private IP address is selected. What this does is if the DHCP fails or there is none, it will generate a random IP address to give the computer an IP address to work with. Okay, so let's um, click OK to that and close this window here. Now this may take a few seconds or a minute as it configures the computer. But once that's done, we can now close our network connections. And now let's run through a quick check and see if that works. So I'm going to go to Start Run. And once my run window, I am going to type CMD. That's short for command. And what this does is open up a command prompt window. Now once in the window, we want to type um, the command IP config. So type IPCONFIG and press enter. Now you should see an automatic IP address generated there and you will see it's a 169.254 and then two random numbers generated. Um, if that doesn't come up immediately, wait a minute and try it again because what it does is wait for the DHCP server to not respond and generates an automatic IP address after that and it may take a minute or two. 
So now let's do one other quick test. If you look on the screen of your CX processor, the little two line display, you will see the name of the controller and it's going to be a CX underscore and a few numbers. So let's type ping, P-I-N-G, CX underscore and type in um, those numbers that you've seen on the um, two line display and once we type that in we are going to press enter. Now what that will do is resolve that name to an IP address and you should see a response back from the controller. That validates that we have a successful connection. Um, that doesn't always work depending on the resolution of the name but most of the time it will. It is just a second check. Um, so now that we're through that it's time to start looking at the twin cat configuration. Let's now configure TwinCat to establish our communications between the development environment and the runtime on the CX processor. We're going to do this by going down to the TwinCat icon down by the clock and left click and select System Manager. Now once System Manager opens up, go to the upper left where it says System-Configuration and click once to highlight that and to the right you should see a Choose Target button. Left click the Choose Target button and you'll get a choose target system window and click the search ethernet button. Now if you get this message that says searching for remote system only possible from local system just click OK to that because we want to get to the add route dialog. Now once we get to the add route dialog we are going to click broadcast search. What that does is basically send messages out over the network um, looking for any instances of the TwinCat PLC runtime. Um, now in our list we see we have our CX processor which matches the name that was on the two line display and along with that you get a little bit more information like you can see the IP address and the AMS net ID. Now from here down to the lower left we see address info. There's a host name and IP address. Let's select IP address. Host name works most of the time but IP address always works so let's use that one. Now over to the right we have target route, let's make that static and remote route, let's also make that one static. Now click the add route button and you'll get a pop-up for a logon, a username and password. Put in administrator for username and a password if you're using a Windows XP system like I am you can see here it's going to be a single digit one. If you're using a Windows CE system it's just going to be a blank password. I'm going to go ahead and put the one in, click OK, and you see after a few seconds it'll um, come back to my add route dialog and now I have an X in the connected column. That verifies that I have successfully added the route. Now let me real quick show you what happens if it does not add correctly. Let's say I'm going to put in a wrong password um, and I'm going to click OK and you see add route to remote system failed uh, and that's because the password was incorrect. Now let me um, go back and do the add route once again. This time I want to put in the correct password, say OK, and you see this time there is no error message. So we can now close this window and we're back to our choose target system. Let's highlight the CX that is now added to our system and click OK. And now back to the main system manager, if you look in the lower right, you can see I've got config mode, but that could also be um, run mode, but we do not want it to be timeout. If it's timeout that means something is not correct and you want to go back and do the broadcast search and and try to um, log in again because you may have um, got the administrator spelled wrong or the wrong password which would cause that but if you successfully go through that with no error messages you should have showing your mode and not a timeout. And from this point you are um, successfully connected to TwinCat and ready to start programming.